John Ernest Francis Collum, Lord Lieutenant for County Fermanagh, convened a public meeting in Enniskillen Town Hall on 10th April 1919 to discuss the provision of a public memorial to commemorate the men from County Fermanagh who gave their lives in the Great War. An executive committee was formed and subscriptions were invited from the public. In the following months and years, the Honorary Secretary, Mr William Copeland, who owned the Impartial Reporter, published lists of the subscriptions to the Fermanagh War Memorial Appeal. In June 1920, a meeting of subscribers was held to determine the form of the memorial. Colonel Richardson, seconded by Dr Fitzgerald, proposed that suitable memorial tablets be erected in a public place in Enniskillen and that the balance be given towards the county hospital to augment the improvement fund. Although this proposal was supported by the subscribers at the well-attended meeting, the Fermanagh Times published a series of letters raising objections to the proposed memorial tablets as they would not be an adequate or fitting commemoration of those who had sacrificed their lives. In July, the Executive Committee announced that formal objections to the proposed plans could be submitted and in September 1920, the decisions made at the June meeting were rescinded at a special meeting of the subscribers. In December 1920, the Fermanagh War Memorial Committee examined several designs and selected two for consideration by the subscribers. Both featured statues of soldiers, one on a Portland stone pedestal and one on a rough granite pedestal. A meeting of the subscribers later in the month selected the design which had been submitted by Messrs Gafflin of the Carrara Marble Works in London. This design featured a white Portland stone pedestal reached by three steps and surmounted by a life-size bronze statue of a soldier in full Great War uniform in a reverent posture with reversed arms. The whole memorial was to be 20 feet in height and would cost £1,600, which equates to just over £70,000 in current terms. In October 1921, the War Memorial Committee reported that 574 names of fatalities had been gathered and that it expected the list would exceed 600 names. The committee invited the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland, being the highest state official and the King's personal representative on the island of Ireland, to unveil the War Memorial. The ceremony was scheduled to take place at 12.40 on Wednesday 25th October 1922 as part of a vice-regal visit to Northern Ireland. On that date, Edmund Bernard Fitzalan Howard, 1st Viscount Fitzalan of Dermont, travelled from Belfast to Enniskillen accompanied by Sir James Craig, the Prime Minister of Northern Ireland. The town clerk, William Arthur Gibbon Ritchie, read the council's address to the Lord Lieutenant which included these words. As in the Boer War, so in the Great War, the unflinching courage and unconquerable spirit of the Fermanagh men, not alone in the Inniskilling regiments, but also in the many other branches of His Majesty's forces in which they served, earned for them undying glory, and the names of the men emblazoned on the memorial which Your Excellency will today unveil, will live forever in our hearts and memories. The front face of the pedestal bore the Inniskilling's insignia, and the inscription, Our Glorious Dead, 1914-1918, with bronze crossed rifles at the base of the pedestal. The Fermanagh Times reported that the names inscribed on the sides total about 650 and represented practically every unit in His Majesty's forces. The names are ordered by service, then rank and then alphabetically. The first names belong to two sub-lieutenants from the Royal Navy, being the senior service, followed by the fatalities from the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers. There then followed the names of men from other Irish regiments, other units of the British Expeditionary Force, and finally the Dominion and Indian Forces. The Enniskillen Urban District Council took over responsibility for the War Memorial in December 1922. Twenty of the men named on the memorial were awarded British Gallantry Awards. Three were recipients of the Victoria Cross, Five received the Distinguished Service Order, with a bar being awarded to one person. Two were awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal. Five men were awarded the Military Cross, two of them being awarded bars. And eight men received the Military Medal. The highest decorated man commemorated on the memorial was Lieutenant Colonel Richard Ansley West, who was awarded the Victoria Cross, the Distinguished Service Order with bar, the Military Cross, 
and was mentioned in dispatches on two occasions. Richard Ansley West was born on 26th September 1878 at Oxford Street in Cheltenham to Augustus George West and Sarah Ayer, and the family was living at Tully near Brookborough by 1901. On 8th January 1900, Richard West enlisted at Newbridge with the 45th Company of the Imperial Yeomanry, also known as the Irish Hunt Squadron, and served in the Boer War from 13th March 1900 to 4th March 1901. He saw action at Lindley, Dewitsdorp and Riddersburg during the Second Boer War. After being discharged, he returned to South Africa where he married Maud Ethel Cushing on 16th July 1909. On the outbreak of the Great War, Richard West sought a commission in the North Irish Horse, but as the War Office had not yet approved his commission, he enlisted as a trooper and sailed for France with Sea Squadron on 20th August 1914. His commission was confirmed in September 1914 and backdated to 11th August. Richard West commanded B Squadron of the North Somerset Yeomanry during the Battle of Arras and was awarded the Distinguished Service Order for his actions on 11th July 1917. His squadron was sent forward to reinforce the right flank of the brigade under heavy shell and machine gun fire. By his excellent example, rapid grasp of the situation and skillful disposition of his squadron, he did much to avert an impending counter-attack. He had shown great ability in command since July 1915. Richard West was subsequently attached to the tank corps and was wounded on 9th August 1918 whilst commanding a company of Whippet tanks in the fighting east of villers Bretonneux. He was awarded the Military Cross for his actions on that date. For conspicuous gallantry and good leadership, he commanded a company of light tanks with great skill. He had two horses shot under him during the day, and he and his orderly killed five of the enemy and took seven prisoners. He rendered great services to the cavalry by his personal reconnaissances, and later in the day, under heavy machine gun fire, he rallied the crews of disabled tanks and withdrew them with great skill. He set a splendid example of courage and devotion to duty throughout the operations. Richard West was awarded the bar to his DSO for his actions on 21st August 1918 at Courcelles. For conspicuous gallantry during an attack, in addition to directing his tanks, he rallied and led forward a small body of infantry lost in the mist, showing throughout a splendid example of leadership and a total disregard of personal safety, and materially contributed to the success of the operations. He commanded the battalion most of the time, his CO being early killed. Lieutenant Colonel Richard Ansley West was commanding 6th Battalion Tank Corps when he was killed in action on 2nd September 1918 at the age of 40, and is buried in Maury Abbey Military Cemetery. He was awarded the Victoria Cross for his action on the day on which he died. On 2nd September at Volts Vrecourt, he arrived at the front line when the enemy were delivering a local counter-attack. The infantry battalion had suffered heavy officer casualties and realising the danger if they gave way, and despite the enemy being almost upon them, Colonel West rode up and down in face of certain death, encouraging the men. He fell riddled with bullets. His magnificent bravery at a critical moment so inspired the infantry that the hostile attack was defeated. There was one woman recorded on the war memorial when it was unveiled. Marion Georgina Graham from Lisnesky. She was born on 9th February 1880 at Casson in the Lispelaw sub-district to Noble Graham and Dinah Noble, nay Carter, who farmed 53 acres of land at Drummock near Lisnesky. Marianne went into nursing and worked at the Meath Hospital in Dublin before joining the Colonial Nursing Service. She was posted to Nigeria on 27th August 1914 and had a period of home leave between October 1915 and February 1916. Marianne was allowed a further period of home leave in 1917 and set sail from Lagos on board SS Aboso, which was carrying passengers, mail, and 3,500 tonnes of West African produce to Liverpool. SS Aboso, which had been constructed at Harland and Wolfe in 1912, was torpedoed and sunk 180 miles from Fastnet by German submarine U-43 on 24th April 1917. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission commemorates 25 crewmen and the Royal Navy seamen, but does not commemorate any of the civilian passengers who died, including Marion Graham. Marion is also commemorated on the wartime nurses memorial which was installed at the National Memorial Arboretum in 2018. 
They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.